Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about a Deepwoken leak. This came in the form of a video posted by the YouTuber Agamatsu. In my opinion, this video is even more exciting than the massive info dump yesterday because it teaches us a lot of new information about the game, and it confirms theories that I had in the past. I'm going to be going over every new piece of information that we learned from this video. The first thing that we learn is that potions can be thrown in Deepwoken. It's unclear what this pink potion does and how it affects the enemies, but it probably stuns them or something like that. I assume that you can throw different types of potions at enemies to achieve different effects. The next thing that we learn is that there is a new bar in the Deepwoken GUI. This bar is green and it's located under the health bar, and we're not entirely sure what it does, but what we do know is that it decreases as the user is hit. Pay close attention to this slow motion clip in Agamatsu's video. As he is hit by the NPC, the green bar decreases. I thought about what this could be for a long time, and I really have no idea. The best theory that I've heard is that it's for potions which increase your defense and after a certain amount of hits it expires. However, I don't think this is the case because I don't think they would make a, a separate bar just for one potion. The next thing that we learn is the name of an island that we've seen before but we haven't seen the description of. The name of the island is Meteor Isle. It's in the territory of Etria and the description is remnants of the stars themselves rain down upon this rocky spire. The next thing that we learn is, in my opinion, the most exciting thing, because I actually predicted this. If you've seen my video on Deep Hawkins NPC events, you all know that I said that one event could be when NPC pirate fleets attack each other in the middle of the sea. In this clip, we see exactly that. We see two ships, one of them is on fire, both of them are NPC ships, and there are NPCs fighting each other while aboard the ships. This confirms that NPC events are real and that players can interact with them if they see NPCs fighting each other in random events across the map. Additionally, there's also something else that's very interesting in this clip. I believe that we're seeing an NPC cast what is to be the first ritual spell that we've seen. Ritual spells are spells that take a long time to cast but have large area effects and can have a significant impact on the outcome of a battle. If we play this clip again, we can see the NPC standing still and casting this massive sphere which looks like a contrarium from Rogue Lineage. When Agamatsu stands inside it, he slows down. Agamatsu hits the NPC and the effects of the ritual are gone. This confirms that you need to be focused and channeling the spell for a long time in order to use these big spells. This means that they would ideally be used in team situations where you can have people who are defending the spellcaster. If you're using this on your own, then you get ganked they're just going to interrupt you in the middle of your ritual. The next thing that we see is a new Fondacle spell that we haven't seen being showcased before. Agamatsu's name for the spell is Electron. When he uses it, it coats his blade with Fonda and it appears to slash at the enemy. The next thing that we see is that someone cast a spell which appears to have a different animation which is similar to a snap spell in Rogue Lineage. It's unclear whether this will have any effect on the actual casting of the spell, or if it's just like a cosmetic casting animation. The next thing that we see is a monster, which kind of looks like an, a titan from Attack on Titan, and a mix between a dinosaur as well. This monster is incredibly terrifying, and you'll probably run away as soon as you see something like this in Deep Welcome. Next we see another monster, but it's not entirely cl clear as to whether this thing is hostile or not. The last monster that we see appears to be a boss, as Agamatsu says to watch out for it. Here we can see Agamatsu get flung back by the boss, and there are trinkets all over the floor, which means that someone next to him died recently. As the boss approaches, he lifts up his axe and kills it, uh, Agamatsu. Let's move on to mechanics that Agamatsu explained during his video. Agamatsu explains how guns work, and it was basically exactly how I expected them to work in the video that I did analyzing Deep Walken's guns. So yeah, basically they're pretty strong, but it's not like they're like ranged. It's like they have like a specific range that they shoot at. 
and that they can hit you from. They also have a like unique cycle. You can also like do like one sword, one gun, so you don't exactly have to do two guns. Agumon 2 basically explains that the gun's a hit scan, which means that if you're in the range of the gun when it shoots, then you'll get hit no matter what. There is no bu bullet that you can dodge. Instead of thinking of it like a ranged weapon, you should think of it like a spear or a melee weapon with extra range. Agamatsu also confirms that you don't have to dual wield guns. You can have one gun and one melee weapon. This is something that I'm very excited for, as I wanted to use a cutlass and a flintlock as my build in Deep Oaken. The next mechanic that Agamatsu explains is fishing. To summarize what he says, uh, essentially how fishing works is that you you equip the bait that you want to use f with your fishing rod, you throw the fishing line into the sea, and then when you see a ripple in the ocean, then you click, and you pull in the reel, and once you do that, your character will move in a certain direction and use the arrow keys to pull in the fish. Agamatsu says that you can either get fish or rare items from doing this. This can be a quick and easy way to get food while you're in the middle of the ocean and you're starving, or it can be a way to get rare items when you're in dangerous areas of the sea. The final mechanic that Agamatsu explains is how potion making works. So basically, one, two, three, four, five of one ingredient will make a certain type of elixir or potion. So the cool thing is, is that you can add in different effects to your potions by adding different ingredients. So if I add a to this, it will increase the duration of my regeneration potion if I was using Gobbledo's. So if you put five of the same ingredient into a cauldron, it will make a potion. However, if you put extra ingredients and mix and match them, then it could change the effects of that potion. For example, putting in one recipe that he didn't want to mention into uh, an invigorating potion would make the duration of the potion last longer. Well, that's all the new information that we've learned from Agumatsu's leak video. In my opinion, this had a lot more substance than the document that Raguza posted yesterday, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, Agumatsu posted this video. If you want to see more Deep Woken content and analysis, then please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Peace! They say I'm way too obsessed and I've got nothing left And I'm not quite there yet, but those words they'll be wet Cause I've got something left and I'm not giving in I will not let them win, I won't stop till the end, no